In this video, we are going to be talking about some basic factoring. And factoring is when you change a quadratic from standard form into intercept form. And we know that there are a lot of benefits in, in doing that. When you convert, or if you have a quadratic in intercept form, you know your x-intercepts really quickly, and then you can find your axis of symmetry uh, just by counting and then find your vertex and so on. So there's a, a reason to do that, to go from standard to factored form. And when we start solving quadratic equations, you'll find that factoring is um, an easy method to use. So we're gonna talk about factoring basic quadratics when your A value is one. So before we do that, let's look at some um, definitions and vocabulary. A monomial is an expression that is a variable, a constant, let's write this a little neater, or a product of these. So what, what I mean by that you know, example could be um, three that is a, a constant, that is a monomial, that is a constant three, it does not change. Um, the, the expression X is also a type of monomial, it's just a variable. Or you could multiply a, a constant and a variable for X, where four would be your constant and X is your variable. So that's the definition of, of a monomial a binomial is the sum of two monomials. So we would say like there are two terms. X plus five is a monomial. There's, there's two terms. Uh, we could even go X squared plus three X. That's another binomial. And then a trinomial is a sum of three monomials. So like our quadratic functions in standard form, those are trinomials. This, whoops, let's erase that. This function right here, this is a quadratic function that has three terms. Um, That is also an example of a monomial, or sorry, a, a trinomial. You have three terms. So don't just think that quadratics are the only um, only type of function that could be written as a, as a trinomial. Trinomial just has three terms in it. So going back to that, idea of taking our standard form quadratics, which we could call them as trinomials, we want to factor them. And when we factor them, we're going to create two binomials. Because remember, in intercept form, we have two sets of parentheses. You know, intercept form is x minus p, x minus q. Those are two binomials. So the easiest way to factor um, is when a is equal to one. So if you have a, an a value that is one, awesome. What you want to do is you want to find two numbers that multiply to your c term and add to your b term. Now remember those come from our standard form. So let's look at some examples. We have x squared minus 3x minus 18. So we want two numbers that multiply to negative 18, because don't forget the negative sign, but add up to negative 3. So what I like to do is I just like to write my parentheses. I say, okay, let's think of my factors of 18, uh, 9 and 2, 3 and 6. And because we have a, a negative, we know that one of those numbers needs to be negative, one of my factors. So we can do x minus six and x plus three. 
and you can double check negative 6 times 3 is negative 18 negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. you could foil this out and see if you get the original um, but that uh, that is a, a little bit of, of work so uh, i'm not going to do that in this video but just know that if you're unsure you could do that and especially when we get to mo those more advanced um, quadratics of standard form double checking your work is a good idea to see if you've gotten the, the correct factory. But when A is one, I think it's just easier to do it this way. All right, letter B, we have D squared plus 14 D plus 48. So two numbers that multiply to 48, but add to positive 14. Um, let's see, D. So we gotta think about our factors of 48. We got 6, and we have 8. 6 times 8 is 48, and 6 plus 8 is positive 14. We're done. It's a little bit trickier when you have a, a positive B term and a negative C term. Because you know one number's got to be positive, one number's got to be negative, like we had right here when they were both negative. Um, again, we knew that one had to be um, positive, one had to be negative. These take a little bit more time. So two numbers that multiply to negative 63, but add up to positive 2. What if we had plus 9 and minus 7? 9 times negative 7 is negative 63, and positive 9 minus 7 is positive 2. So you'll see the more that you do these, the faster you will get in the, um, the more that you'll realize um, some of these patterns with, with your factors. Again, we found two numbers that added up to our B value, but multiply to C, and those were our, um, our factors. We're not asked to go anything to do anything further, we're not asked to write down any x-intercepts. We we're just told the factor. So we wrote all of these in um, intercept form now. Now, if a is not 1, if you look at these examples down here, a is not 1, the first thing you want to do is you, see, you want to see if all of your terms have a, a GCF or a greatest common factor. Greatest common factor factor and what that might allow us to do is it might allow us get to get a an a value of one so if we look at letter a right here we have 2x squared minus 12x plus 16 and you can divide all those by 2 2 negative 12 and 16 are all divisible by 2 so what we can do is we can factor out a 2 so notice I divided everything by 2, and the 2 is out front. I'm going to not use the word divide as much later on because that's not what we're actually doing. We're not dividing everything by 2. We're factoring out a 2. And we can do that because each of those terms is divisible by 2. So it's very important to understand the language because if you just divide everything by 2, it's very easy to just ignore this and not write it out front, but then you're actually changing our function. All right, now that we have our, you know, our insight here, we need two numbers that multiply to positive eight, but add to negative six. So that's going to be oops, x minus four times x minus two. And like I said, make sure you bring this down because that is part of your uh, factorization. And you can double check. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, and negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. Now, in letter B, there's a, a, a typo. We're, we need to get rid of this too. So that just, should just say negative 4x squared plus 12x minus 8. 
you can divide all of those by four. So we're going to factor out a four. However, because our A value is negative, we're going to factor out a negative four. We always want our A value to be positive when we factor. That just makes everything a lot easier. When you factor out a negative number, you will need to change all of the signs on the inside. Because we're, we're, you know, essentially what you could think of, think of it as is we're dividing by a negative four and that will make our answers change sign. All right, now we're going to factor this. Let's keep our negative four. So two numbers that multiply to positive two, but add up to negative. That's going to be negative one and negative two. And that is our factored form. Lastly, letter C, you look at that and say, well, there's no, there's no C term. There's no like plus or minus a number out here. That's okay. Um, now you notice that both of those are divisible by five, but they also have an X in common. So we can actually factor out a five X and then we are left with, you know, X minus two, you know, if we redistribute this back in, 5x times x is 5x squared, and 5x times negative two is negative 10x. So this still works. And remember that this is in fact intercept form still, and you know, our intercepts would be zero comma zero and two comma zero. So don't forget that you can factor out a variable or an X. We are going to skip for now um, factoring when A is not one where you can't take out a GCF. Like all of these up here, we were able to factor out a GCF and our A value is one. So we could do what we did up here. These problems, you can't do that, and we'll, we'll talk about that later. I do want to skip here to look at some special patterns. Examples four, five, and six here. Um, the A value is one, and what that allows us to do is it allows us to have um, some shortcuts and special patterns. So first one is called the difference of two squares. So if I have something squared minus another thing squared, what that will factor to is a minus b times a plus b. And if you look at example four, x squared minus four, well, x squared is, like, like I said, just x squared. It's something squared. Four is two squared. So what this would equal would be x minus two times x plus two. And you could multiply this out and get the original function right here. It's just a shortcut. You know, and if you forget the shortcut, you could still do it the way we talked about. You know, there is no b value. Your b value is zero. So two numbers that multiply to negative four but add to zero. Well, that's negative two and two. Negative two plus two is zero, and negative two times positive two is negative four. That's just using this using this difference of squares formula just um, makes it a little bit faster. The perfect square trinomials, those are a little bit harder to see. And I'll be honest that I don't see them all the time. Like if I'm looking at this problem right here, it's faster for me to say, oh, uh, that's going to be three and three. Three times three is nine and three plus three is six. But when you get more complicated ones, then it might be more useful to use your, your shortcut. So if I have something squared plus two times AB plus B squared, what that will allow you to do is go and say 
a plus b. Uh, let me write it down here. a plus b times a plus b, which is the same as a plus b squared. Because you have these two things being multiplied twice. If we look at this one right here, example number five, like I was saying, you could have x plus three times x plus three, you know, two numbers that multiply to nine, but add to three, or sorry, add to six, that is three and three. So x plus three times x plus three, which is equal to x plus three squared. And the last one is the same thing as we had for example five, just with a subtraction sign. So this is actually going to be a minus b times a minus b or a minus b squared. Again, for something like number six, it might be easier to see, okay, well, what two numbers add up to negative four, or sorry, multiply it, yeah, add up to negative four, but multiply to positive four. X minus two times X minus two. Two, negative two times negative two is positive four. Negative two plus negative two is negative four. You can write this as X minus two squared. So we will look at what happens when A is not one tomorrow. Uh, so thank you for watching and make sure to like and subscribe.